park on Observatory Hill. Come on, let's pretend we're Jack and Jill. We'll stroll to the hilltop where college sweethearts go to look at the lights on the campus down below. We'll learn what astronomy is for, and we'll learn what the stars can have in store. I know in advance that the moon may mean romance when it's dark on Observatory Hill. And I'd like to recite you a poem that I wrote. It tells why I think you're wonderful. And from afar we can hear a sweet guitar while voices are harmonizing. You don't have to know arithmetic just to figure why you and I would click. My heart tells me this, your lips were meant to kiss. And it's dark on Observatory Hill. Good evening, fine peoples. Today's discussion shall be about the nature of planetary influences. Uh, now, to start with, we know that the sun is a giant electromagnet radiating lines of energy into space, and that these lines of energy are cut by the various planets revolving around the sun, much as the armatures of a dynamo, as commonly installed in our power plants. Cut the lines of energy radiated by the electromagnet at the center. Uh, the great physicist Tyndall, um, many years ago, indicated how dependent upon the sun are most mechanical actions, chemical changes, and other manifestations of power on the surface of the Earth. And to this conception, investigators into the occult have added the assurance that whatever a mental and spiritual nature is expressed on Earth also derives its energy from the sun. The sun, then, should be regarded as sending forth not only light, radiant heat, electromagnetic energy, and exerting the power of the gravitation, but also as radiating still finer energies through astral and spiritual substances, which, when expressed, manifest as mental and moral attributes. In fact, whatever energies exist upon the earth, we may be sure that they were chiefly derived from the sun. The boundless regions of space undoubtedly are fields of energy, for thousands of universes are other than our own, with all its countless hordes of suns and systems, are known to be rushing through it with an average speed, so astronomers say, of 480 miles per second. These universes, over a million of which are known to exist, have long been recognized as spiral nebulae, and they certainly radiate energies other than the light, by which they are seen. Our universe, known as the galaxy, uh, also is traveling at a distance of 100,000 to 1 million light years from the other known universes. Light travels 186,284 miles per second, according to 1942 findings, and one light year is the distance light travels uh, in one year. And while there are stars in our universe that move with much greater speed and some that move slower, the more than a billion suns comprising our universe have a usual speed among themselves of 8 to 21 miles per second. Our sun carrying with it the Earth and other planets of the solar system travels with a speed of about 12 and a half miles per second, and the Earth on which we live moves on its orbit around the sun at a rate of 18 and a half miles per second. These figures, of course, stagger the imagination. But I have taken them from recent reports of well-recognized astronomers for the purpose of indicating that the heavenly bodies are moving with great speed, and that, as we know, through the very fact of being able to see them, they are each radiating energy. Therefore, as they move, each in its appointed path, they cut fields of energy set up by the other moving suns and universes. This being the case, we may regard our sun as a great step-down transformer. 
Our Earth and the other planets probably are not suitably constituted for handling the high frequencies that abound in the path of the sun. We are most of us aware that the voltage of electricity, as it comes from a powerhouse to be carried any distance, is too high to be used in the ordinary electric appliances. It is necessary to install transformers to lower the voltage before the current is permitted to flow over the light lighting system or common power wires so the sun may be looked upon not merely as a dynamo but as a transformer of the high tension energies of space stepping them down to such frequencies that they set up a new field of energy about the sun the planets revolving around the sun uh, in elliptical paths cut the energy field of the sun this is not an electromagnetic field of energy but uh, only, but also an astral energy field and a spiritual energy field. And the planets cutting this huge energy field in turn become transformers and transmitters of energy. That is, each being different chemical composition and different density of material, they each are adapted to picking up energies and stepping them down to certain other frequencies and radiating these into space. In this manner, similar in principle to that which may be observed in modern electrical appliances, the energies of space are gathered up by the sun and again radiated. Then the planets gather up this energy, and each giving it a special trend again radiate it into space. Thus it reaches the earth and man from the particular direction occupied by the planets at the time, and endowed with the particular attributes imparted to it by each. As no one up to the present time has been able to explain it in a thoroughly satisfactory manner, just what light, magnetism, and electricity really are. It would be premature for this author to try to explain just what the astral light is. But this energy by which the influence of the planets is transmitted to the Earth is seen by clairvoyance as a peculiar light. It varies in color and luminosity, even as the sunlight does, and seems to be the all-pervading medium of vision for those who have left the physical plane and now live in the adjacent astral realms. As physical science is in heated debate as to how light and other electromagnetic energies traverse space, we need to not to be too positive as to the nature of the vibrations that transmit energy from the planets to the astral body of man and other things, but we need not remain in doubt that such energies do reach and influence all things upon the Earth. For this is a matter easily ascertained by experiment. Then again, if I am asked why planetary influence is arranged so that there are seven distinct kinds of influence, one kind being transmitted by each of the seven planets more anciently known and more, more and the more recently discovered planets of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, transmitting an influence that is the octave expression of Mercury, Venus, and the Moon. I can only answer it is because the septenary division, septenary division, is the one mostly adhered to by nature. Why is it that there are seven tones in music? The eighth being a higher expression of the first. Why does the light that comes from the sun when passed through a prism or seen as in a rainbow dissolve into seven distinct colors? Why is it that the 92 al uh, chemical elements also tend to follow the same septenary law, the atomic number being determined by the number of electrons revolving about the nucleus of an atom, given multiples of such electrons expressing similar qualities on lower and higher octaves as witnessed in bromine, iodine, chlorine, and fluorine, which each expresses qualities common to all, but with greater or less activity. The impulses and thoughts of man, likewise, are susceptible to a grouping in which there are seven well-marked families, and in which three of these families have expressions on a higher octave which gives them additional characteristics. Therefore, uh, even as in other departments of nature, so we observe in planetary influences also a definite grouping of qualities. We find the same quality that is expressed by the influence of a planet upon human life to be expressed in sound by a certain musical tone, to be expressed in color by a certain hue, to be expressed among minerals by a certain metal, to be expressed among stones by a certain gem, to be expressed among numbers and letters by certain of each, to be expressed among human thoughts by a def definite, definite group, and among peoples by particular nations. In other words, the same quality of energy expresses in all these and many other domains of existence, but in each case, the expression belongs to a given octave. Number one, the sun. 
as directly affecting life upon the Earth radiates those frequencies of astral light that produce a dignified and life-giving influence. It is the same quality that expresses in terms of ordinary light as the color orange. It expresses in sound as the, color, as the tone D, and in human thought as power. Two, the moon, cutting the field of energy set up by the sun and the field also due to the earth, is so composed that the wavelengths and frequencies it transmits into space exert an influence that is plastic and receptive. It is the same quality that expresses in terms of color as the green ray of the solar spectrum. It, domin it expresses in sound as the tone F and in human thought as domesticity. Number three, the planet Mercury, acting as a transformer and transmitter of energy, radiates an influence that is sharp, active, changeable, and clever. It is the same quality that expresses in color as violet. It expresses in sound as the tone B and in human thought as intelligence. Number four, Venus transforms the solar energies to a different rate of vibration. Her influence is clinging and submissive. It is the love quality which expresses in color as the yellow ray. In sound, it expresses as the tone E, and in human thought as sociability. Number five, the energies radiated by the sun when gathered up and transformed to a different rate by the planet Mars exert an influence, energetic and combative. It is the same quality that expresses in color as red, in sound it is the tone C, and in human thought it is aggression. Number six, Jupiter, largest of all the planets, transmits an influence that is cheerful and beneficent. Uh, it is the same quality that expresses in color as the indigo ray of the solar spectrum. It expresses in sound as the tone A, and in human thought as religion. Number seven, Saturn, the planet with rings. <laughs> transforms the energies it receives into such wavelengths and frequencies that they exert an influence that is cold and reflective. It is the same quality that expresses in color as blue, in sound expresses as the tone G, and in human thought as safety. Uranus is merely the higher octave of Mercury, transmitting an influence original and disruptive. It is a quality expressed in color by all combined into a dazzling white. Its tones are above the physical, such as the astral chimes, often heard by psychics. It expresses in human thoughts uh, as individuality. Neptune is the octave of Venus and transmits an influence, a visionary and idealistic. It is a quality expressed by iridescence in which colors glint and change and flow one into another. Its tones are likewise above the physical, combining as the music of the spheres. And in human thoughts, the same quality expresses as the utopian. Number 10, Pluto is the octave of the moon, transmitting an influence that is forceful and compelling. The domestic impulses are expanded to embrace a larger group. It is a quality expressed by ultraviolet or infrared in color, and by either harmony or discord of tones. In human thought, it expresses the universal welfare. As an instrument affects the tone sounded on it, it should also be expected that the tone quality of a given planetary influence is greatly affected by the astral conditions of the particular portion of the heavens occupied by the planet at the time the note is sounded. We are well aware, for instance, that the effect upon the ear of the tone C is much different than the tone emanates from a cello than when it emanates from a uh, whatever else. Due to the field of energy of the combined sun and earth, the astral vibrations received from the planets when in one part of the heavens and those received when in a different part of the heavens, although always the same in pitch, are different in tone quality. That is, they are sent from various sounding boards. Observation proves that the path in which the sun and planets apparently move about the earth is divided into 12 distinct sounding boards or instruments for astral tones. This path in which the sun and planets apparently travel is called the zodiac. It commences due to the polarity of the earth and in relation to the sun at that portion of the sky where the sun crosses the celestial equator from the south to the north in spring each year. 
The north and south hemispheres of the Earth, as indicated by the magnetic needle, are of opposite polarity, and where the sun apparently crosses from one polarity of the Earth to the other in coming north is where the zodiac begins. The zodiac is divided into 12 equal sections, called signs of the zodiac. Each sign or section of the zodiac is named after a particular constellation of stars, which pictures its influence, but which does not coincide with it either in location or extent. As each sign of the zodiac has its own quality and a sounding board from which planetary tones may be sent to Earth, it follows that the influence of a planet when in one zodiacal sign is not the same as when in another zodiacal sign. The planet Mars, for instance, when in the sign Aries has a pleasing quality like the tone C sounded on a cornet, but when in the sign Cancer the same tone is displeasing like the tone C sounded on an old tin can. This tone quality as influencing life on Earth has been determined by careful observation for each planet when in each sign. Now, houses influence volume and sh uh, show department of life affected. Uh, but besides the quality of a tone, we must also take into consideration the acoustic conditions where the tone is heard. Due to these conditions in some great auditoriums, it is easy for the slightest tone to be distinctly heard, and in other halls, a tone does not carry or is reflected from walls and ceilings in such a manner as to produce a confusion of sounds. Of this public speakers are well aware, and in like manner the astral vibrations reaching any particular point on the earth are subject to the conditions of the environment in which they are received. The earth and its atmosphere have an astral counterpart, through which astral vibrations must make their way to reach any point on the earth's surface." When these rays come from directly overhead, they have less astral substance to traverse, and when they come from other directions, they have more in varying degree. The surface of the Earth, too, is rotating at the equator at the rate of over 1,000 miles an hour, which evidently has an influence upon this field of energy about the Earth, which, again, must have an influence upon any astral waves reaching the Earth's surface at a given point. So we find that the direction from which the astral vibrations of the planets are received with regard to that point on the Earth where, uh, where received has an influence upon both the volume and the trend of their influence. This variation in the volume of a planet's energy that actually reaches the spot and the particular trend that is given to it may be accurately mapped by a circle divided into 12 equal sections called mundane houses. The circle represents a line around the Earth to the east with the observer at the center. A horizontal line across the circle represents a line passing from the eastern to the western horizon. A vertical line through the circle represents a line from zenith to nadir. Each of the four quadrants thus mapped then may be divided into three equal sections by other lines radiating from the center. As it is found, and may be experimentally verified, that the volume of energy received from a planet when in the section of the sky mapped by one of these mundane houses is not the same, nor has it an influence upon the same department of life as when received from some section of the sky mapped by a different mundane house. <clears throat> we now have three different factors under consideration, all pertaining to the manner in which the planets affect life upon the Earth. Number one, the pitch or tone of the astral vibration radiated by a planet. Number two, the tone quality or resonance given to the astral vibration radiated by a planet by the particular zodiacal sign which acts as a sounding board from which it is sounded. Number three, the acoustic condition of the auditorium, the point on Earth where the astral vibration has an influence which determines the volume of energy received and the particular department of life it most influences. And there is yet another consideration before we have spread before us all the more important factors of astrological influence. Number four, the manner in which each tone harmonizes or discords with each and all other tones reaching the same spot. We are doubtless all familiar with the formation of small whirlpools, so frequently to be seen in large numbers at high time, uh, time of high water in our streams. Currents of water meet at just such angles of 
convergence that they whirl with the proper velocity to form an independent entity, which endures as such for some period of time amid the boiling, seething flood about it. A funnel-shaped hole in the stream is observed. The waters around it are forming a rotating wall. Something has been constructed in the surface of the raging torrent that did not before exist. It has properties quite distinct from any other part of the stream. But currents of water meeting under different conditions from an angle, let us say, that is more obtuse do not form any such entity. They merely roll and toss and foam as they tumble along without forming anything distinct and apart from the general current of the stream. Those of us who have lived on the desert are also familiar with whirling dust columns. Currents of air meeting at just the proper angle form a rotating air column that sucks up sands and dust. And sometimes larger things, the column of whirling sand reaching from earth to sky, moving off across the desert as an entity, possessing properties quite apart from the surrounding atmosphere. There are also stronger winds on the desert that give rise to sandstorms, but these have not the properties of the whirling columns. Water spouts and tornadoes are less familiar to most of us, yet they also present an instructive lesson on how currents of air meeting at the proper angle and velocity become agents of terrific power. Further, light waves under certain circumstances may be brought together in such a manner as to produce not more light, but less light. This interference of certain light waves with others gives rise to the dark lines of the spectrum. The waves so combine as to cancel each other's motion. Now, therefore, with these familiar illustrations of water, air, and light currents acquiring distinctive properties due to the manner in which they join, we need not be surprised to learn that astral currents, when they converge at certain angles, possess distinctive properties. And even as careful study of water currents indicates the conditions under which whirlpools form, so also careful con observation has established the conditions under which the astral currents from the planets meet to acquire certain def definite influences. Whirlwinds all do not have the same properties. They vary greatly in height, in area, and in movement. Neither do astral currents, when they join in such a manner as to acquire distinctive properties, express always the same characteristics. In fact, there are ten different kinds of astral worlds known, each formed by a distinct angle of meeting and expressing distinctive characteristics. These astral winds are not produced by the meetings of the rays of the planets from all angles. They are formed only when the planetary rays meet at definite angles, which have been learned through observation. When the angle at which the astral vibrations from two planets meet is such as to form a definite condition, comparable to a whirlwind, or to a rapids in a river, or to the undertow of an ocean beach, this angle is called an aspect. In all, then, there are ten aspects or definite angles at which planetary rays meet to exert a definite influences. Uh, the disturbance in the astral streams when they meet from certain angles is like a cyclone, very violent and destructive. When they meet from other angles, the result is the formation of energies that tend to bind together and build up the astral organisms that they contact. These energies are such that they may be constructively utilized by the astral forms receiving them. But other energies formed by astral currents meeting at other angles exhibit an explosive tendency when contacting astral forms. Experience teaches that astral currents from the planets meeting at a right angle, one half a right angle, one and a one half a right angle, and twice a right angle, each has a disintegrative or destructive influence. A right angle, of course, is 90 degrees, and the aspect formed by planetary rays meeting at a right angle is called a square. When planetary rays meet at an angle of 120 degrees, the aspect is called a trine. And experience shows that when planetary rays converge at a trine, one half a trine or one fourth a trine, each aspect having an influence peculiar to itself, the influence is distinctly integrative and constructive. The other three aspects recognized when the two planets are in the same degree of the zodiac, when two planets are in the same degree of declination, and when two planets are 
150 degrees apart do not seem integrative or disintegrative in themselves, but depend for their constructive or destructive attributes upon the tone and quality of the planetary streams they combine. Now, the question arises, why is it that all things in the same vicinity are not affected by the planetary streams of energy that converge there in the same way? <clears throat> Before answering this, the author will ask counter questions. Why is it that when the tone C is sounded in a room where there is a piano, the C string in the piano responds with a sound and the other strings remain silent? And why is it, listening to a radio, that it is possible to hear a concert given at a distant place, yet not hear other concerts that are being broadcast from the same place using different frequencies? It is because of vibrations strike a sympathetic response from and thus influence other things having a similar vibratory key. Again, it is because vibrations strike a sympathetic response from and thus influence other things having a similar vibratory key. The astral body of man and the astral forms of things contain centers of energy of the same key as each of the planets. But in one person or thing, the center of energy keyed to one planet may be so small in volume as to be capable of almost no response, while the center of energy keyed to another planetary influence may be so large that it is constantly sounding a response to the influence of that planet. All persons and things sound a response, transmitting the influence of all the planets in some degree. But usually the center of energy that transmits the astral vibration of some one planet is more prominent than the centers of energy that respond to those of the other planets. And when it has been determined which planetary influence the person or thing responds to most strongly, the person or thing is said to be ruled by that planet. Now, in closing, we're going to talk about the diverse functions of astral vibrations very briefly. It will now be seen that astral vibration is the means by which energy is communicated from one astral body to another. By it, the clairvoyant sees events happening at a great distance, or in the path, or in the future. By it, tones are carried to the astral ear, giving rise to the clairaudience. Events and environment impress their influence upon the astral forms of all things, and these influences being constantly radiated are carried by them to a sensitive person who thus psychometrizes the object. Thoughts are carried from one part of the universe to another by astral vibrations from the living to the dead, and from the dead to the living. Also, it is the means by which the planets each send a special grade of energy to the earth and each reaching the earth from a certain sign of the zodiac possesses a specific tone quality and reaching the thing or person from a given direction or mundane house has a special volume and trend and converging with other planetary rays at given angles results in a definite constructive or destructive influence thus does astral vibration underlie all occult manifestation uh so uh if you missed that that was the words of the writer c c zane c dot c dot zane z a i n he's the author of many many books he passed away in the 1950s and um i will read other things by him as well in the future please hit the subscribe button please let people know i exist I'm just a little, 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 little nobody on here on the YouTube giving you free magic secrets all the time. I bring you them for free, and I want you to tell other people that I exist. And it'll be really fun. Everybody, it's fun. And then we'll have a giveaway. Uh, giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. Okay. Okay, guys. Talk to you later.
Remember that 